Hey, up. Or should I say, hello, 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 what's going on here then? I'm actually a bit perplexed as to why I haven't made this video before today. Because when we leave our bike stored overnight or whether we're out and about, security of our pride and joy is one of our biggest worries. And of course, with a 15 year career in law enforcement, I consider that I'm in a pretty good position to give some useful practical advice. Now, during the course of this video, I will be showing you the light lock core motorcycle lock. Well, I'd like to point out that they're not paying me to make this video and in fact, they want the lock back. And I was actually contacted by their PR specialist uh, to ask if I wanted to make this video and do a review on it. I haven't actually been able to work with light lock directly. So for the most part, I've just had to rely on what's on their website. Now, back in the old days, when I was in the job, we did proper police work. We actually went out and visited the site where the bike was stolen from. Took a crime report from the owner, spoke to them, got to find out the exact circumstances of how the bike was left and what security measures had been put in place. And get this, we would actually investigate it. And of course, frequently incidents would occur where he would end up locking Billy Bike Burglar up throw him in a cell and then interrogate him. Now, broadly, there are two types of bike thief. There's your casual bike thief, your opportunist. Quite often, they're not tooled up for stealing a bike. They're just looking for a vulnerable machine that they can ride around on for a few days until it runs out of petrol, and then they dump it in a field and set fire to it. Let's call them the category A bike thief, but then there's the category B be bike thieves. They go equipped to steal with all the relevant tools that they think they'll need, and they're usually stealing bikes to order either for the bikes themselves or for parts. And this to some extent is organised crime. It wasn't unknown even back in the 1970s for these guys to ride around in Ford Transit vans, they would spot a bike, three or four of them would get out of the van, they would lift the whole thing up, just throw it in the back of the van and drive away. That way they could deal with any bike locks and steering locks behind closed doors in their own good time. And a lot of those machines would either end up being stripped down for parts for sale, or they would end up in a container on its way to Eastern Europe, where it could legitimately be sold on the market because it effectively had no registered history in that country. Over the years, I dealt with both types of thieves, and the most successful ones, believe it or not, were often the most cooperative. They didn't get caught very often, so they didn't have much of a rap sheet, which in turn meant that they were unlikely to get a prison sentence for nicking this one bike that you'd brought them in for. And all they really wanted to do was get the processing over, admit the offence, so that they could be charged and billed to court, go home and ultimately go back out and continue stealing bikes. Now, once they'd actually been charged, you had to go through the process of fingerprinting, photographing, filling out an antecedents form, and that's when you would sort of get to know them properly. They would become quite chatty. A lot of them were quite proud of their craft. You know, they were professional criminals. And it was during those conversations that I would have with these people that you would learn the tricks of the trade and gain the sort of knowledge that would make your motorcycle just that little bit safer when you left it unattended. Now, in very simple terms, you need to make your bike as unappealing to a thief as possible. And of course, the simple answer to that is go out and buy a BMW. All right, I was only joking about the BMW thing. Most thieves have one thing in common, the lazy. They will always take the path of least resistance. The one quick and easy, they don't want to expose themselves to detection any more than is absolutely necessary. So although there's no way you can stop a tooled up and very determined thief, the more difficult you make it for him to steal your bike, 
the more time consuming you make it for him to steal your bike, the less likely he is to target your bike. And he'll look for an easier, softer target. Now I'll discuss home security at the end of this video. But what I want to talk about first is instances where, you know, you're going out to the shops and leaving your bike unattended for an hour, or you're out touring. You're away from home and you want to make sure that your bike is as safe as possible. Now, make no mistake, professional gangs with vans do operate in touristy areas. It's not just something that's limited to inner cities and urban environments. It's a little less common, but in tourist areas, they know that there are going to be rich pickings of high volume machines, quite often without any form of security other than the standard steering lock. One thing that did become quite apparent to me during my time in the job is when talking to bike theft victims, people would often park the bikes in quiet, out of the way places. You know, it was a newish bike, it was the Pride and Joy. They didn't want it getting knocked over or scratched, so they would pack it somewhere quiet out of the way. And of course, quiet and out of the way is perfect for a thief, because it's going to allow him more time to work on that bike unobserved. So wherever you go, whether you're shopping or touring, park your bike in the busiest congested place you can find. The beauty of motorcycles are that you can slip them into relatively small places. So you can usually find a parking space in a busy area. And the more people that there are milling about in that area, the less attractive stealing your bike is going to be to a bike thief. Okay, there are some very brazen thieves around nowadays, I get that. But there is no magic bullet that will make your bike impervious to theft. You've just got to stack the odds up against theft as much as you can. And the other thing is, and I often hear this in the comments section of my videos, people know that there are areas that are notorious for bike thefts, yet they continue taking the bikes there and packing them up even though they may have already had one or two stolen. Use a bit of common sense, if you know it's a bad area, don't leave your bike there. Now the other thing is overnight parking while you're touring. This is probably when your bike is going to be its most vulnerable. I'll get onto the bike lock in just a moment, but first of all, there are one or two things that you can do to mitigate getting your bike nicked while you're in a hotel or a bed and breakfast overnight. If you can, book your accommodation ahead. Give yourself a couple of days to ring around and find out which hotels or bed and breakfasts have secure parking. Some do, a lot don't. Quite a lot of hotels and bed and breakfasts have gated car parks. It's another barrier in the way of a thief. If it's difficult to get to your bike, especially if there's CCTV up as well, it's probably an establishment that is not on their regular rounds. They'll avoid it through past experience. Now, even some of the smaller bed and breakfasts may have domestic garages that will have space for your bike. It doesn't hurt to express your concerns over security and ask. Right, so let's talk about motorcycle locks and how to use them properly. Now, this light lock core is a good example of a high quality, high security mobile lock. And when I say mobile, it's a compromise. There are some far more secure lock products on the market, but their bulk and weight just makes them unusable for touring and general traveling about. They're more suitable for a domestic setting. And to be honest, at about two and a half or 2.9 kilograms, this is about as big and bulky as you would want to be carrying around with you. Before we get too deep into the sort of specifications and features of this lock, I want to say be very, very wary about YouTube videos that show you how easily these types of lock can be defeated. I spent 
a couple of hours yesterday morning flicking through YouTube videos just to see what people were saying, particularly about this lock. And to be honest, I was quite appalled by the sort of false manipulative nature of those videos, you know, trashing not just this lock, but different makes of lock, a lot of the leading brands. These locks are designed to be difficult to cut through and defeat when the properly attached to a motorcycle so for a start if that video that you're watching doesn't have the lock attached to a motorcycle move on it's worthless now i watched several videos where the guys concerned were making all sorts of excuses as to why they were doing it the way they were doing it and as to why they were using certain tools instead of something a bit more real world and realistic but it all boiled down to the same thing. The videos were just orchestrated to make it as easy as possible for them to cut through the lock. No bike thief walks around or drives around with a bench with a vice attached to it when he's out looking for a bike to steal. And he would have to take the lock off the bike in order to place it in that vice to cut through it. It's ridiculous. Same for the guy with 3 million views who showed you cutting through one of these locks in, I think he quoted, 14 seconds. Because it wasn't attached to a bike, he had it on the floor with some heavy duty cutters. He wasn't using muscle power to cut through it, he was using the gravitational force of putting his body weight on it. And he was actually picking it up and manipulating it around to get the exact best angle for cutting through it quickly. He wouldn't have been able to do any of those things if it had been properly attached to a motorcycle. So just be wary of those type of videos they're not realistic whether you're looking for further information on this particular lock or any other of the leading brands now this is the light lock car motorcycle lock and it comes in two different lengths 125 centimeters and 150 centimeters this is the shortest of the two, the 125 centimeter version. The actual locking mechanism itself, as you can see, is very heavy duty. It's all solid steel and it's protected by rubber armor. As you can see, there is a sort of a weather latch over the keyhole itself. That's purely to keep water ingress out of the lock. Light locks say that this is a high security lock and that it's pick proof. Now, I don't know how to pick locks, so I don't know how accurate that is, but that is the claim that they're making. Looking at the keys, they are of a type that I've seen on some very high-end, high-security locks in the past, so I'll take their word for that. Just quickly looking at the casing design of the lock mechanism itself, the surround on the male part of the lock, as you can see here, is recessed. And it's designed this way so that it will slip inside of a shroud, a protective shroud, on the female part of the lock. What this effectively does is it protects the locking pin from attack by something like a cold chisel and sledgehammer type attack. They can't get access to the locking pin in order to break it. In fact, looking at the design, all they would probably succeed in doing is bending that shroud in and making the lock impossible to open. It's a well thought out design, which I think makes this lock about as secure as a lock can be. So the only angle of attack that a would-be thief is really going to have for this bike lock is to attack the actual cable itself by means of a hacksaw, a portable battery powered grinder or with a cable cutter now the cable itself is very thick and it's not a round cross section it's an elliptical or ovate design and the reasons for that are obvious if you're using something like a cable cutter which is basically a type of bolt cropper but specifically designed for cutting cables. Whichever angle of attack a would-be thief makes, this cable will twist so that it's exposed to the jaws of the cutter, presenting the cutter with the largest possible surface area. 
obviously what this does it will reduce the bite pressure of the actual cutter itself because it's spread out over a larger surface area this is the cable's first line of defense it's been engineered that way to give cable cutters a hard time and that's exactly why those videos that i mentioned earlier on put them in vices or the pin them down to the floor to stop them from twisting because twisting also will start to force the jaws of a cable cutter apart very slightly which again will reduce its ability to cut through if you've ever tried to cut through something like a sheet of leather with a pair of scissors you'll know what i mean the leather just kinks and the scissors won't cut through it you have to sort of start at the edge and just chew little bits off which takes time and that's the reason for this design because tam is billy Bitebergler's worst enemy now the cable itself is encased in a pretty thick neoprene cover i think this is mainly designed to protect your bike as are the rubber armored pieces that cover the locks and even when you've removed that sheath or cover the actual cable itself is still covered in what looks like some sort of nylon mesh so long term as long as you're reasonably careful and not too rough you shouldn't have any problems with this entire assembly damaging paintwork or chrome now going to the actual cable itself there is a quite nice cross-sectional diagram of this on their website unfortunately i tried to download it and it must have some sort of copyright encryption built into it because i couldn't convert it into a format that would display on my video editor they describe it as a multi-filament inner core covered by a fan grain steel exoskeleton and then of course various weatherproofing components covering that which i've already explained to you I will leave a link in the video description to this product so you can have a look at all that information yourself. I did approach them about 36 hours ago now about some technical specs and diagrams. They said they would send them through to me. I've not received anything as yet and obviously I'm on a limited time budget. But if you're interested in one of these locks, I do have a discount code. Unfortunately, again, we've got this communications problem. I don't know how much the discount is. I'm sorry if that seems a bit amateurish, but I can only do what I can do with the information that I've been supplied with and the time scales that I have available to me. I think it's sufficient to say that this particular lock has met the sold secure gold standard for motorcycle security as well as one or two other prestigious security standards so it is up there right at the top with the best of the best and it's well worth your consideration one of its best features is of course its weight it weighs approximately half of the chain equivalent bike lock and it is competitively priced light lock have clearly put a lot of time research and effort into making this lock as secure as it possibly can be and as difficult for billy bite burglar to tackle as possible but like with any lock if it's not applied to your bike properly you're not going to have maximum effect when it comes to security now going back to those conversations that i've had with bike thieves in the past one of the biggest mistakes bike owners make when securing the bikes with this type of lock is this they simply pass the chain or cable through the wheel and then leave it on the ground like this or this and this is directly from the horse's mouth when you do this they've told me that you reduce the security efficiency of that lock by a factor of about 10. if they're using bolt croppers or cable cutters or even a battery powered grinder you've given them a very nice firm solid surface to work on you've effectively removed that intentional inbuilt flexibility that the manufacturer has designed into it to make it easier for the bike thief to either cut through it with a grinder or cut through it using bolt croppers or cable cutters 
you've turned what could have been a five or ten minute struggle into a 15 second formality and that goes for all bay clocks of this tape not just this one you've effectively supplied the thief with a ready-made anvil so that he can lay his bolt croppers or cable cutters on the floor pin one arm down with his foot whilst he puts his entire body weight on the other arm to slice through the cable and you're denying the cable its ability to flex. You've wasted your money and seriously compromised that lock's ability to protect your bike. Whenever you use this type of lock, always use it in a way that ensures that it's at the very least six inches off the ground and preferably fit it so that it's loose. Don't fit it so that the actual cable or chain is taut. You need to leave as much flexibility in that chain or cable as you can so that those design features can do the job. If the would-be thief is using a low-torque portable battery-powered grinder, it's going to allow the chain or the cable to vibrate and that's going to nip the blade and slow him down considerably. If he's using a cable or bolt cropper, it stops him from using gravity. He's got to use pure muscle power and nothing else. And if he's having to use both hands on the cropper, it means that the cable is going to be free to flex and that design feature, again, is going to compromise his ability to cut through it and it's going to slow him down or even stop him completely. In fact, most seasoned thieves will take one look at a scenario like this and they'll walk away and look for something easier. And of course, another thing to remember, if you can, fasten the bike to an immovable object like street furniture. Keep the chain or cable well off the ground and if you can, don't allow it to be too taut. Allow some flexibility to remain so that the design can do its job. That'll make it a lot harder for the gang in the van scenario and substantially increase the chances of your bike still being there when you come back for it. All it takes is a little bit of thought in your security regime to make it harder for them. So, finally and quickly, home security for your bike. First thing I would do if you value your bike is get an alarm fitted. Now, for you guys that have to keep your bike in your garden or even on the street, there's no easy answer to ultimate security. In fact, ultimate security for that situation doesn't exist. All I can suggest is that you buy at least two of the heaviest duty domestic type motorcycle locks, i.e. locks that are not designed to be carried around and fasten your bike up to a gate post, a lamp post, whatever you can find, and then just cross your fingers. Those of you that have got access to garages or sheds, obviously you're gonna be in a better position. First of all, security cameras. I'll leave a link for the ones that I use. They're less than 40 pounds each. They have Wi-Fi connectivity and they will send an alert to your mobile phone if anyone steps within the areas that you've set up to trigger an alarm. They also have the ability to record whatever is going on on your property. I would recommend that you use the minimum of two to survey the shed or garage where you keep the bike. Keep them well up off the ground out of reach so they can't be interfered with. Thieves don't like cameras. A camera recording their every move increases the risk of being detected at a later date. Ensure that your steering locks on your bike are locked. Put a chain or a cable lock like the one I've shown you today on it if you can or something more heavy duty. But there's something else that you can do apart from just locking your garage door and that is to use another vehicle during the hours of darkness to protect your garage. Most domestic garage drive setups will allow you to pack a vehicle right up to the garage door, which means to get the garage door open, they've got to break into the car and move it out of the way. Most modern cars have alarms. In fact, you can't take the handbrake off in my car unless you have the key. So there's an enormous amount of danger 
just get into the garage door for your average thief. Then he's got to get into the garage. Then he's got to get past the security measures on your actual bike before he's in a position where he can make off with it. Believe me, most bike thieves won't even bother. Right, as I've said, I will leave a link to Light Locks website so you can peruse their range of locks. I'll also put that discount code on there. As I've said, I'm not sure what the discount amount is. But there is the facility there to get it a little bit cheaper if you're interested in buying one. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I'd also appreciate it if you would consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does help me out a lot. As usual, I will of course be back next week, so until then, if you're riding, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon.